so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg. I'm not a big advocate of cheating to get ahead in life. But you know, let's face it, uh, these are not normal times. So I'm willing to consider options that were previously anathema to a goody two shoes like me. Enter Jeff Chrysler, an old friend of the Mr. Media Radio Show and the author of the new book, Get Rich Cheating, The Crooked Path to Easy Street. Now, In this manual to the easy life, Jeff kicks ethics to the curb and puts readers on the fast track to mastering scams, fraud, steroids, and of course, public relations. Now, this is Jeff's second appearance here. The Rising Humorist also came on to talk about my Wall Street Journal, on which he was an editor. Jeff, welcome to Mr. Media again. It's great to be here, Bob. Good to hear your voice. I, well, <laughs> let's not push it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I don't we, want... both have, we, we both have a face made for radio, as they say. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't need to scam me here. You can just teach other <laughs> people how to do it. <laughs> so teach me, O oh, cheating master. What do I need to know? Well, uh, they say in the book, people have been cheating for wealth ever since God created heaven and earth in six days and submitted an invoice for seven. Um, there are so many different ways to cheat that it, it's hard to know where to begin, except uh, that everyone should buy my book, of course. That's a, a cheat <laughs> Um Just cut to the chase here, why don't you? <laughs> exactly. Hey, that's, uh, that's a cheat. Uh, I'm, I'm just keeping it real, staying to character. Um, you know, I, I think that realistically, right now, I people, as you mentioned, you know, we're struggling, but yet we look in the news and we see people like guys at AIG, or, Le- or not Lehman Brothers, but you know, AIG and Goldman Sachs, and people making unheard of amounts of money even in these tough times, and then, you know, there are people that use steroids like A-Rod and Bonds, and, and it just seems like all the big figures that we see right now, there's something sort of unethical and sneaky behind it, and it's, it's you know, I framed it in terms of cheating, and, you know, it's kind of a sense of if everyone else is doing it, why not me? Um, and so my book tries to present ways that you can do it, whether you want to be an athlete or a politician, a, a movie star, or just a businessman. Um, there's plenty of ways to get rich cheating. Didn't your second grade teacher give you the message, cheaters never prosper? Did, was she wrong? She That was uh, programmed into her by a weak hippie culture that didn't want me to succeed. <laughs> Um, I did get that message, and that was just because at the time the cheaters wanted to keep their secrets secret, but I've kind of realized that I want to spread the cheating gospel because if enough cheaters are out there, they won't be able to catch us all. So I'm spreading the word. Get out there and now, cut corners. Why is it that it seems to me a natural uh, progression from my Wall Street Journal to get rich cheating? Is there a connection there? <laughs> I think there is. You know, as I mentioned last time we talked, for um, – you know, three, three and a half years, I wrote a weekly business humor column for thestreet.com, and I realized business humor column is itself a strange combination of words. But, um, you know, the <laughs> Wall Street Journal um, was Tony Hendra's idea, but I got on board, and the, the book um, all came from the same thing, which was that as I wrote this column every week, it made me read the business pages every day and learn about business and what was going on. And, you know, this was in 2000, uh, you know, what, 2004 to 2007, the height of the boom. And, you know, I don't, I'm not a business expert, but just reading it and being a smart guy, I saw that it was, it was, um, it was a fool's paradise. It was, it was glass houses, it, whatever the, the proper metaphor is. It was people making money based upon nothing. You know, our housing market skyrocketing, uh, people getting fired from their uh, CEO job but getting a $40 million severance. Uh, it was just you know, everyone was cheating, and um, what I've tried to do in my career is find a way to, instead of being another guy that rants and raves and says this is outrageous, is try to channel it into something satirical. Um, and, you know, what we did with the Wall Street Journal was take on, you know, Rupert Murdoch taking over the Wall Street Journal and the media and in, within that all the absurdity in business. And in the book, I've tried to take on this whole culture of cheating that, you know, is to me very obvious in the business world, but um, as I expanded the book in, with the encouragement of my publisher to showbiz and politics and, and sports, it's really kind of in all of our culture. Um, mm. And so I tried to have my way of not ranting was to be the satirical 
um, how-to guy, the uh, the leader of the seminar, the great cheating man. Well, uh, Jeff, the thing that strikes me as a little odd here, and I, I wonder if it's a little disingenuous of you, is that you say it's satirical, but I may have thought that when I started reading it, but by about the 10th or 20th page, I was thinking, hey, this is really a guidebook. <laughs> It, it is, and there was a woman I uh, did a reading in San Francisco, and she came up to me and said, you know, aren't you ashamed when kids take this advice and start cheating? And, you know, of course my response was, you know, it's comedy, it's it's a satire. Um, but, you know, if someone is so inclined, they could actually see this as a how-to. Um, you know, I think they've got to lack uh, a lot of ethics and a lot of morality. But, you know what, that's part of the profile. I mean, the one thing I found looking at people from Bernie Madoff to Alex Rodriguez is these guys have a certain psychology, a certain, you know, God complex and arrogance and belief that they can get away with anything. Um, mm. And I certainly, you know, Jeff Chrysler, the person, certainly hopes that no one takes it to heart. Um, but Jeff Chrysler, the author, hopes that they do. <laughs> and then when they get caught, that they tell everybody that they read it in Get Rich Cheating. <laughs> Exactly, or before they get caught, once they get rich. Uh, but, you know, oh, there's yeah. a section at the end about how to get off once you've been caught, how to, uh, you know, deny everything, blame other people, um, how to, you know, find a friendly extradition kind tr country to run to, and then if all else fails, how to fake your death. So, <laughs> now, you oh, I have a theory. Uh, I have a theory that didn't ahead, make please. it into the book. Uh, okay. That um, I don't think Bernie Madoff is really going to jail. I mean, the guy stole $60 billion or something. Pretty sure he could afford a clone. <laughs> if he can't, who could? Exactly. Now I, I have to ask you because I was actually at the Rays Yankees game yesterday and saw a Rod, uh, and you mentioned him twice now. Uh, when we watch him play, how can we see that he's cheating? I mean, how can it be apparent to those of us who, who you know, who get the uh, the Jeff Chrysler gospel here? <laughs> well. Um, on the one hand, I will say, although I don't agree with you as Tampa being the center of the uh, baseball universe as it was in the intro, I at least am on your side as a Red Sox fan um, and will say that the easy way to know he's cheating is that he's wearing a Yankees uniform. That right there is a sign of the devil. Um, I think the way we can tell he's cheating is that we can look at his bank account, we know how much money he's making, and we can look at the fact that he continues to do his job without a hint of remorse. Even though he's admitted cheating, the key is he just keeps doing it as if it's just as as normal as waking up and breathing the air. Um, and a great <laughs> cheater needs to do that. Just just keep plugging. Just keep going until you're physically stopped. Keep making as much money as you can. You know, the life is short. Whoever dies with the most stuff wins. Now we got to go back here. Now, now you you brought up something. I can't let this go unchallenged. I mean, St. Petersburg, Florida is. The American League That's Baseball capital of the world. Can't deny true. that. Not enjoy it. Boston. Enjoy it for a while you can. Twelve um, months. Every team gets twelve months with that. Exactly. I'm very, you know, I don't want to get too far on tangent, but I, I'm actually, you know, as much as I can be, I'm happy for you guys. I uh, once 2004 happened, it changed my perspective. I actually went to, um, I was working at a comedy club in Chicago, and I went to a Cubs Red Sox interleague game in 2005. And I pretty much walked around and said, if anyone wants to touch me and hope it rubs off, go for it. You know, once <laughs> once we got our glory, I'm happy to share it a little bit with anybody that doesn't reside in the Bronx. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, folks, if you've uh, got a comment or a question for our guest, uh, Jeff Chrysler, the author of Get Rich Cheating, give us a call. we got a line open, 1-646-595-3135. 646-595-3135. That is only if you are listening to us live. Otherwise, we're not here. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, can anyone get rich cheating? Can it, you know, could it happen to anyone? Absolutely. You just have to, you know, decide you want to do it. Um, you know, not everyone is, uh, is good looking enough to be a movie star, but then that's why the plastic surgery and stylist. Um, and radio. Know, not everyone yeah, exactly, radio. Um, not everyone is fit enough to be uh, hit 50 home runs, but that's why there's steroids. Um, you know, not everyone knows how to run a business, but that's why there's Wall Street. Um, you know, not everyone can be competent enough to be elected president. That's why there's computer voting. I mean, whatever you want to do, there's a system out there how you can cut corners and get ahead and and make ungodly gobs of you know gobs of money. I mean, 
our, our bailout is in the trillions of dollars. Just take a 1% slice of that or even a half a percent slice. I, I'm not good at math, but that's a lot of money. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity out there for people to, uh, to cheat no matter what they want to do. And, you know, do I need a college degree or a high school diploma to do it? No, um, you know there may be some places where you have to, you know, get hired for a job, and they may require that. But then you just lie on your resume. I mean, I think that's one of my favorite things people do is they, they lie on their resume. I mean, resume is sometimes called a CV, which you know is for the Latin curriculum vitae or the old English cheap verily, and uh, you just. <laughs> You can lie. Lie your way into a job. I mean, look, I look at it this way. There's no reason if you're going to be a cheater that you need to start ethically. You know, you're not going to get into an industry ethically if you're going to just be unethical. So why not, you know, lie and scam your way into a job? Now, what about, what if I'm an athlete with more biceps than brains? What, what can I do to get rich cheating? Uh, you can get yourself a, a contract with, let's say, baseball, since we've been talking about that. Get yourself a, a performance-based contract that says how, you know, if you get a certain number of home runs, you'll get more money. And, um, you know, you've got the big biceps, so go to it. And if you can't hit a home run, maybe you're not coordinated, then you can always turn your fleeting fame into some sort of, um, you know, a reality show life or a modeling career. Look at Jose Canseco. He's writing books that are, you know, years after he was his playing day, and he's making money on it still. Um, the important thing for cheaters to realize, especially those that are in like sports or showbiz, is once they get that publicity, that itself is a valuable commodity that in our culture now, you know, the 15 minutes of fame can be extended into 15 months and 15 years if you're, if you're a savvy enough cheater. I mean, what does Paris Hilton do? Does anybody know what Paris Hilton does? <laughs> Nothing, but she's making money all over hand over fist. Do we need a <coughs> – excuse me. Uh, do we need a new version of 15 minutes of fame? I mean, do, you know, 15 tweets of fame or you know, 1,500 Facebook friends of fame? How, you know, how do we ad ad adapt uh, uh, Andy Warhol to the new era? Huh, that's a good question. I think it's not every. What was he say? Said everyone gets their 15 minutes of fame. Um, maybe everyone now, you know, posts their 15 minutes of fame or blogs their Ooh. 15 minutes. I mean. Um, or it gets spread out over 140 characters and sums into 15 minutes. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's, I mean, our, our culture at this moment kind of puts a large value on celebrity, on, you know, how many friends you have, like you said. And, um, you know, some might say it's sad. Uh, a great cheater would say it's something wonderful to exploit. You know, go sell people, go online and tell people that for 25 bucks you can get them 3,000 Twitter followers and boom. There'll be people pouring in the money just so they can have "quote unquote" friends. And you can get rich cheating. Wait a minute, Th those are scams? What are you talking about? Uh, I tell you what, if you send me twenty-five dollars, I will tell you whether it's a scam or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you, you. I, now, I don't want to doubt your credentials for this, but I mean, you know, let's just play, just play along with me here. What qualifies you? Uh, previously known as a uh, satirist, a humorist, a, a funny guy, a comedian, uh, to be our leader in the get rich cheating. Uh, so you're, so you're yeah. basically saying, who are you? Um, which <laughs> I get that a lot. I get people asking, who am I a lot at family reunions and bridal showers and AA meetings. Um, you know, I, think <laughs> I, I used to be just like all the listeners out there. You know, I used to sit around in my underwear, drinking beer, watching Oprah. And then uh, I, I read the paper one day, like I said, and started writing about business news and saw all these people were cheating, and I wanted to do it. So I studied what they did. I mean, I, I did the research, whether it's in the newspaper or uh, the best source of reliable information out there, Wikipedia. And <laughs> uh, I mean, I found I just studied their methods, and there are certainly patterns. And, you know, in the book, uh, I, I lay out some of the key things that you need. You know, if you're in business, you need a complicit board of directors and you need to have certain types of stock options and stuff like that and your accomplices that you want and how to manipulate numbers. And um, it is, it's a pretty simple method once you get to the, to the basis, the, to the bottom of it. Um, so you just, uh, you just got to trust me. Uh, I, used to, I, used to, uh, I used to be a lawyer before I became a satirist. And, and I'd like to say, trust me, I'm a lawyer. So you, know, you can't trust me, the guy that used to sit around watching Oprah just like the rest of the people out there. <laughs> so. And um, who uh, 
who are some of the legendary and, and, and as well the modern heroes of the get rich cheating movement? Can you tell um, us well, my the, the one I always kind of look upon with reverence is Enron. I mean, even the name Enron, it's like Yahweh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for my fellow MOTs out there. Um, I mean, Enron really just had everything. I mean, they they first of all they were a part of the oil industry or energy industry, which is a great cheating industry itself. Uh, they they made up numbers. They they used imaginary stuff like they had these offshore entities called like Jedi and Chuko and Raptor. I mean, they they manipulated everyone from grandmas to the entire city of Houston. They had connections and government. They set oil policy. Um, you know, their defenses that they used when they were on trial. Um, uh, Jeff Skilling, the CEO, they found an email of his that said, shred the documents, they're on to us. And in court, said he was just being sarcastic. I mean, <laughs> how great is that? And then, you know, of course, um, after being convicted, Ken Lay passed away, uh, quote unquote, passed away. So Enron, to me, is the modern, uh, the, the great cheater of all time. Um, but then, you know, there's also the Bernie Madoff. I mean, he was just $60 billion. That's a lot for one guy. Um, you know, in sports, I, you know, look, you look at A-Rod and Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire and all those guys. Um, show business, like, I always tend to fall back on, like, Paris Hilton just because it's not clear to me what discernible talent she has. Um, and yet she's made it big and she's well-known by everyone. Um, politics, you know, certainly we just came out of eight years of the Bush administration, so it's easy to point at that, but I think that, you know, the Bush administration did a healthy bit of getting rich cheating. Um, you know, some might argue getting he got elected questionably, um, and then he had a war that benefited a lot of people, and which was kind of questionable. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, mm. In fact, I've written a book about all the people, and you're listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what about uh, uh, someone who's been in the news a lot the last couple of weeks? Uh, uh, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin is she is she is she cheating or is she just dumb? Which? <laughs> well, according to the, you know, I use a broad definition of cheating in the book, um, and she <laughs> certainly would fall under that. I mean, what she's managed to do and what really impresses me is kind of combined some of the cheating lessons in different industries. Um, you know, she's learned from George Bush that you don't need to have a full grasp of the issues to be a leader. Um, she's learned from, you know, the kind of our political system now that, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do. It's the image you create. Um, I, and on that way, she's learned kind of from show business that it's about image. It's about appearance. It's about, you know, this whole, like, put your family first and, um, you know, and she's, again, a little bit of George Bush and a little bit of other people, um, you know, that in their defenses and, and things they say, she's learned that you don't have to make any sense. In fact, the more nonsense you say, the more people think there might be something hidden behind that. You know, I call it confusion to your enemies. I mean, some of the stuff she says makes just so little sense that we end up thinking that maybe she's actually some sort of idiot savant, and this does make sense. Um, so I think she's, uh, I think she's, she's brilliant. And I cannot wait for her to quit six weeks after being elected president. <laughs> I, I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to her getting a radio show or TV show. As a matter of fact, I'd like to invite her to co-host Mr. Media for a week and and see you know she could test it out that way. Uh, you by the way, any... Mr. Media, that that's exactly the problem. It's the media, and you represent all of the media. <laughs> <laughs> Can, what, what is she going to do if she gets her own radio show? Then who is she going to blame? She, people are going to play back what she says on the radio and go, oh, that's just the media spin on it, don't you know? <laughs> but she could come know. on here, and, and, I, and, and we could be equally unprepared because I'm, I'm always unprepared. And, you know, I think we'd, I think we'd be a good match. I, I'd like to have her come in here, and maybe I could learn, at, at, you know, at her feet. I, I think it's a, it's a possibility. Give her, give her a call. When we have – we have um, – Every six months, we have a great cheaters conference, and when I see her there, I mm. will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I don't know. We we meet at a place called Twitter, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a question for you from uh, the uh, the live web chat that accompanies all the Mr. Media interviews. Uh, fan sports politics. That's uh, one person uh, was going to call in and ask you, and was having uh, headphone problems. Wanted to ask you about how to cheat the lottery. 
how to cheat the lottery? Well, the best way to cheat the lottery is to run the lottery uh, and convince <laughs> people that all they need to do is give you a dollar twice a week, every week for the rest of their lives, and they'll have a chance to make millions. Um, as far as really winning it, I don't know. I think you could uh, find out the winning numbers and, and use Photoshop to fabricate yourself a, uh, a little uh, fake winning lottery ticket. Um, you know, of course, you could get a, a time machine. Um, you could find out who won and then go beat them up. Not that I really advocate violence. I suppose I should draw. I should draw the line at satirical violence. No violence. Um, <laughs> satirical violence. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that's my, uh, that was the name of my high school band, by the way. Satirical violence. Satirical violence. I thought maybe um, that was your next book. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, my next book is going to have to do with uh, publicist. But anyway, um, uh, I think you know you can. Um, I don't know. Go and get get in the coup. Maybe if someone wins a lottery, but you know how some of them don't want to have all the publicity. You call, you contact them, and you just say, you know what? I will take ten percent for your winnings. Um, the lottery is a tricky one. But yeah, I think uh, I think though the real thing to do is to start your own lottery. I'm reminded of. Uh, it, I don't think it has to do with cheating, but I'm reminded of this old joke uh, where. And Harry looks up at God and he says, God, just once, can I win the lottery? Like, what is it going to take? And Harry looks down, uh, God looks down and says, Harry, buy a ticket. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll leave the jokes to the funny people. Um, oh, that was, that was fun. <laughs> that's always been one of my favorites. Hey, you know, as, uh, as a cheater, I will now use that on stage somewhere and uh, make millions of dollars. <laughs> you might have Milton Berle come after you for that old joke. Um <laughs> what about a guy like uh, sticking to politics for a minute? What about a guy like uh, Rod Blagojevich, the uh, former speaking of governors, the former governor of uh, Illinois? Actually, what about all the governors? Is, is I mean, is apparently being elected governor seems to be a, a license to cheat, whether it's uh, cheating the the public of money or you know cheating on your wife or you know, it's uh, well, I, think I don't know. People, you have to realize your, your limitations. Not all of us, if you're in politics, can make it to the Oval Office um, and cheat the really big trillion-dollar stuff. So if you get to be a governor, there's still a state budget there you can, you can take advantage of. Um, and, you know, let's go for it. I mean, look, Rob Blagojevich knew, like, his hair wasn't going to get him everywhere. So he had to start selling Senate seats and, and selling contracts with uh, was it the hospital board his wife was on or something like that. Um, you know, it's a position. It's a position of power that the only, you know, in some ways, the only step above that is going to be, you know, the White House. So use that position of power. You're one of just 50, and, and get go crazy. Um, as for the people that cheat with infidelity, I mean, the book isn't about infidelity, but it does kind of fall under hypocrisy, which is covered in the book because, you know, these are guys that got elected and got into power and got into a position to control money based upon their stance their moral stance, their family values and everything, and meanwhile, they themselves are, uh, are doing the opposite of what they preach. Um, and that's great. I, I, I very much advocate uh, being a hypocritical liar. <laughs> well, I want to point out, for people who haven't seen the book yet, and, and uh, I'll give you some information in a minute about the, where to find it. Uh, it's, it, it's actually, it's, it's, not just, it's not just what uh, came spewing from uh, Jeff Chrysler's uh, mouth or fingertips at the computer, it is well-researched. I mean, it, it, there's footnotes and all kinds of stuff. But uh, with your permission, I'd like to read from uh, the very end of the chapter called uh, No Time Like the President. Um, sure. Well, speaking, of, speaking of presidents, uh, you, you talk about some of uh, George W. Bush's appointees. Uh, I love this. Um, Alan Hubbard, uh, economic advisor to the president, killed off regulations that hindered his own financial interests. Uh, Michael Levitt, Secretary of Health and Human Services, proposed new rules to regulate safety for workers, parts of which were lifted verbatim from coal industry suggestions. Um, and, of course, Grinch, the Undersecretary for Stealing Christmas, pushed through an anti-Santa tax that disproportionately uh, benefited the naughty. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a, uh, folks, I've got to tell you, this is, you, you, you will not go a page uh, here without chuckling over something, uh, and it is packed. And now, speaking of cheating, though, I got to ask you: this is uh, the book is digest size. It's kind of like uh, the old TV guide on uh, on steroids. Frankly, um, is there a is there a cheating explanation to the size of the book versus you know, being full size? 
Well, I think the idea was to make it unique and have it stand out. Um, you know, I mean, I don't. Your viewers, obviously, or your readers, uh, listeners, listen to me. Um, your listeners can't see, but the cover, you know, is gold in color, and I think the, the book really stands out. Um, and, and I think the size that was part of the idea to make it sort of a unique thing. And it, it's 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 thick because it's three hundred something pages, but the the pocket size does fit nicely into people's, um, you know, into their. Uh, whatever the, the the prison wear that they wear, those orange jumpsuits, you can put the book right in there. Um, <laughs> so I think that was the idea behind it. Give it a little unique angle. Here here's another example. I'm I'm just I'm just um summing I've I've got a well thumbed copy and it's dog eared throughout. Um this is from the chapter <laughs> Exploit Everyone. Um uh, <laughs> I I think I've known this before, but teacher is an anagram for cheater. Mm-hmm. Coincidence? I cheat not. Um and this one, I, I, don't, I don't know, this one seemed to have slipped by me. The president of Oral Roberts University, Richard Roberts, son of the televangelist Oral Roberts, family tradition, another cheating opportunity, um, mobilized students to campaign for a mayoral, mayoral candidate, had his house remodeled 11 times in 14 years, coerced underlings to lie to the IRS, flew the school jet to family vacations, and used school funds to pay for cell phones, including text messages sent to hot undergrad boys between 1 and 3 a.m. And then you add, hey, no one ever said get rich cheating wasn't compatible with be a creep cheating. <laughs> exactly. I'm not, look, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you bribe the judge that will judge you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you, you mentioned that, it, that it's, it's well-researched, and I, and I appreciate you seeing that because it's like this is, I mean, this is um, in the bookstores, it's in the nonfiction section. I mean, obviously, you know, with the satire and their jokes and, you know, the stuff about the anti-Santa tax is a little made up. Um, but there's just so much out there. It's kind of that classic, uh, I, when I was researching it, I, I found myself falling on the classic, if you don't laugh, you're going to cry, um, because there is just so much stuff that falls under cheating. I mean, one of the things that, that I always talk about that, that in, probably upset me the most was seeing how cheating trickles down to all levels, and there are parents now that are getting their kids diagnosed with learning disorders so that they have longer to take the SAT exam. So they get into a better school and can earn more. And it's just like, on the one level, I'm sure all of us are like, oh, that's a good idea, <laughs> which is kind of frightening. But at the same time, it's kind of, you know, like to get your kid labeled, a, you know, having a learning disability just to kind of cut a corner. Um, and, I, and I think that, you know, the book tries to focus on the, on the big cheaters, the ones that are making millions and the ones that are ruining countries. Um, but, you know, in everyday life, people are cheating a lot, it seems. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I hope to maybe shine a light on that. And, uh, you know, I hope to encourage that in some ways, but, um, you know, just by <laughs> the, per- the, the person hopes to not encourage it. <laughs> Author wants to encourage it. Well, um, uh, folks, you can see uh, Jeff Chrysler tomorrow, July 30th, if you're listening to us sort of live, at uh, the East to Edinburgh Festival. And, Jeff, where is that? <laughs> That is at the 59 East 50, 59 Theaters, which is on 59 East 59th Street in New York City. Um, and if anyone here happens to be listening uh, you know, on the web or anything, I'll be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival for all of August. Um, what I've done is I've turned this book into uh, you know, a show, which is basically, it's basically a seminar. It, it, it's an accompaniment. Um, and it, uh, I had a preview last night that went really well. Um, and we've got a, a fake infomercial that you can also see online. Um, every day I put up new cheating stories, or I try to do it every day on my website, getrichcheating.com. Um, I mean, there's, like I said, you pick up, go ahead and pick up a paper, and you know, there's, on every page there's a story or two that can be cheating. Um, so I'm never going to run out of material for this. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, I promised uh, to mention before, you can uh, order Jeff's new book, uh, Get Rich Cheating, at uh, great uh, bookstores everywhere or at mrmedia.com and amazon.com. Uh, and Jeff mentioned his website, getrichcheating.com, or you can also follow him on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash Jeff Chrysler, and that's J-E-F-F-K-R-E-I-S-L-E-R. Jeff, uh Always fun to have you. Good luck in uh, Scotland. Thank you. Um, Thanks for taking the time. Good luck with the show. And um, and uh, whatever uh, money you make off this, I get a percent. Right? That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck to you. Good talking to you. Thanks, Bob. Take care.
All right, Jeff. Bye-bye. And folks, for uh, more comedy or comedian interviews, you can surf over to our main website, uh, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Lisa Lampanelli, Aziz Ansari, Judy Tenuta, Ralphie May, Yule Spencer, Lisa Ann Walter, uh, Ant, Michelle Ballin, Robert Schimmel, twice, Bob Alper, The Whitest Kids You Know, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, TrueSlant.com, DigitalJournal.com, Vox, Podcast Pickle, MediaFly, Blueberry, Zencast, Zimbio, or Odeo. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com, A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a piece of your day and come spend it with us.